We're here with uh, Scott Dean of the McHenry Outdoor Theater. Scott, you guys are finally able to open up tomorrow night. Can you kind of take us through the process of the last couple months and, and what leads us into what's happening tomorrow night out there? Sure. Um, you know, it, it really all started once the um, coronavirus became a real issue. Uh, right almost immediately when when that was the case and it started to really affect uh, the economy and uh, then we had the, the shutdown or the lockdown the stay-at-home order uh, I, I immediately went to work uh, on how we could make the place safe and uh, sanitary and if there was even a possibility of opening what we had to do to get to that point all right, and over the past uh, maybe week and a half, there it's been a roller coaster for you. You you felt like you got to that point, then it was pulled back, and then you got to that point again. Can you tell us kind of specifically, uh, since you got the email from, it was kind of anonymous, but it was from a government entity. Since you got that email, what did you go through um, to get to this point where you were able to open, and who ultimately told you you could open? Sure. Uh, so yeah, we were, I was originally told I could open. And like you said, I got an email then later that said I could not because I was not essential. Uh, the, the interesting thing is uh, the changes that I had to make in order to open, there, there were no changes. Uh, what I did have in place was good enough to open. And uh, that's what we stuck with. Um, and then uh, when I, actually it was last week, this would have been last Thursday uh, uh, that I found out um, I got a call from Tom Weber, who's a state representative, and he has the territory that the McHenry Outdoor is in. And he, he basically just called me and said, hey, you know, you can, you can open tomorrow if you wanted. And, uh, and then it was a voicemail. And I'm like, well, I can't open, you know, just on, based on a voicemail. So thankfully, he called back and he got me the documentation uh, in case I needed to show it to anyone. Uh, but yeah, since, uh, since last Thursday, we've been in a little bit of overdrive, making sure we're we're stocked, making sure we're uh, we're ready to open um, with with the stuff that we need to to serve the public. Where are you at right now in terms of those preparations? Like, if 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 tonight was opening night, are you already ready, or do you have a lot of things you got to do between now and then? Uh, right now is kind of the details, um, but if, if we had to open tonight, we absolutely could. Um, I, I may be the only employee able to work, but uh, uh, we could absolutely open the gates, show a movie, and uh, keep everyone safe and healthy. So, sh yeah, we could, we could open tonight. Tell me more about that with the only employee able to work. What, what do you have to do between now and then to get your team ready? Uh, well, it's been difficult to meet with the team uh, strictly because of the, uh, uh, the uh, COVID-19 restrictions. So I've seen all my employees in bits and pieces, you know, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and, you know, we're standing there going over things from six feet away uh, with masks on our face. But uh, this will be the first time we'll all be together. Uh, we're actually going to meet uh, uh, tomorrow late in the afternoon uh, to go over every single detail uh, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, but the, the most important thing, I think, is that we've already – uh, you know, through Zoom meetings and through uh, emails, everybody is really well educated and prepared on the need to uh, uh, self-sanitize uh, and how to sanitize areas that are uh, used or touched uh, by the public. Uh, we do have a stay in car rule, but still we want to uh, err on the side of caution and keep everything um, as uh, sanitized as possible. So I, I, when it comes to cleaning, sanit sanitization, and uh, hygiene, Everybody there is on the same page. So now I guess where we're at is uh, how do we serve the public when they can't get out of their vehicle, uh, you know, when it comes to concession items. And uh, I'm really borrowing a page from the restaurants in the area, and we're, we're basically doing curbside pickup uh, with golf carts. Uh, that's about all we can do. Uh, and we, we kind of scale down our menu just to offer uh, kind of the bare essentials, you know, burgers, hot dogs, popcorn, candy, drinks. Um, so, so that's where we're at today. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we kind of just hit the ground running, and I'm sure we're going to uh, have some items that we want to revisit, because um, we this is unprecedented. I mean, this theater's been here for 70 plus years, but we've never, it's never gone through anything like this, so this is uncharted waters. So we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do well. All right, I'm going to ask one more question, then I'll turn it over to Nabiha, and she can ask some questions, um, too, so I don't, I'm not 
the only one doing it. Um, so it, it, say I, you know, I live somewhere near the theater. I've got my family. I plan to go tomorrow night, you know, if it, in a hypothetical cir circumstance, how early am I showing up and take me through kind of like what the process is. If somebody plans to go tomorrow night, how do you, how do you know you're going to get in? You know, I'm ticket sales. I mean, people are asking, why can't we buy them ahead? Can you take us through that whole process of what it's like to be a customer or what your plan is for a customer tomorrow night? Sure. Uh, the, you know, the advice I have isn't too different from when we normally open for the season. Um, I, I tell, you know, the earlier you get here, the better. Uh, we, we typically open our gates at 630. However, if there are lines going out to the road, we'll have to open early. So I, I could see us opening, uh, honestly, maybe by 530. Uh, I do have, uh, I did hire two sheriff's deputies to help me with the traffic. Um, so that should help. Uh, but, you know, we have a capacity of 750 vehicles, but to keep the social distancing between vehicles, uh, we can only allow 350 cars in. So there's no doubt that we're going to sell out. We're going to have more people wanting to get in than we have the room for. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to the uh, pre-sales, there, there's, a, there's a long list of the reasons we can't do pre-sales. One of them is uh, only certain types of software or ticketing software are uh, deemed usable or uh, can be used in the eyes of the movie studios. And uh, to, to be honest, it's, it's pretty expensive. And at this point in time, I, I can't, and I, I can't justify spending that money uh, before we've even opened our doors. But the other thing that, that is really hard with pre-selling tickets here at the outdoor is, sure, you can sell individual tickets, but I still have no idea how many cars that is. Um, so, you know, sometimes there's four people per car, sometimes there's two. And the last thing I'd want to do is sell more tickets, you have people show up who purchase tickets, but I don't have room for their car. So it's either way we would sell out either way. There'd be someone disappointed. Um, I'm, I'm excited that there's this much interest in the theater. Uh, you know, this is a odd time where there's uh, not much to do. So I, I know a lot of people have cabin fever, but, uh, we're going to do our best to get everyone in, but the earlier they get here, the better there's, there's no, I can't tell you a time that's better than another, just the earlier, the better. All right, great. Um, I also heard you were doing some graduations. We had talked last time about, you know, how you wanted to kind of serve the community and during this time, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Uh, there's been a lot of, there was a Facebook article or there was an article that was being passed around on Facebook. I saw it everywhere about uh, this drive-in that was doing graduations. And uh, I think it became uh, pretty, pretty well viewed, especially amongst the superintendents and uh, uh, school officials. Uh, but they contacted me and uh, we're going to do quite a few graduations. I believe every beginning next Sunday, every day we have a graduation of some kind. And, and the way those work, uh, it's kind of the same as the theater. It's a stay in car rule, uh, but it's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to have on the screen different things from like senior pictures and uh, pre-recorded valedictorian speeches. And uh, it's, I, I think it's going to be pretty remarkable. Um, I, I'm just thinking, you know, if I was a senior in high school, I, I think this would be pretty memorable. So I love this as an alternative and uh, we're, we're, we're just having fun with it. Great. And um, when we talked last time, we were talking about how, uh, you know, people can purchase radios. Like, what is, how are people going to be able to hear the movie? Can you talk about that? Yeah, actually, I, I kind of, that there are some things that change as we go along. Uh, radio rentals, we're actually not going to do. Um, if somebody rents the radio, we would have had, to, it would take a week to sanitize it. So we just don't have enough radios to keep in rotation. So we're not going to uh, rent radios, but I've been everywhere I post, I try to let people know, you know, please bring a radio from home because we do broadcast over an FM frequency. So, so you can listen through your car stereo or the radio. Um, and those, those are the two best ways to do it. I also did add some speakers to the outside of our two buildings, the projection booth and the concession stand, so that there'll be uh, the sound of the music kind of pumped out throughout the lot. 
So there shouldn't be any issues hearing the the movie. Oh, and the other thing too is we have the, the those speakers that are on the poles. Uh, those will be turned off for the same reason we're not renting out the radios because once a speaker enters a car, it has to be sanitized, and uh, that that would be a pretty big task. People are asking about if you if you open it up or if you're in the back of a truck, there you got to wear a mask, um, and it's like. Is that a state rule? Is that your rule? Were you asked to do that? You know, that, you know there's questions about everything with these rules right. everywhere you go. No, and I, I understand people questioning that because they're already social, socially distant from a vehicle next to them. Um, the way I looked at it is my employees who are out in the lot, they're wearing face masks. Um, I, I kind of wanted to instill a rule that if you're in the open air, you have a face mask because I, I mean, I've even caught myself there. Sometimes you get into old habits where you just get up and walk, you know? So I, I just want to, uh, I want to protect the, my employees and the customers at the same time. I know it might be overkill, but um, I guess this is one of those cases where I'd rather err on the side of caution with this whole thing. Can you tell us who has booked graduations, kind of a list? Is it high schools, elementary schools, which ones? Boy, we, I don't have a specific list in front of me, but um, we've got everyone from high schools to grade schools. We even have a uh, homeschool group coming in. Um, so it's, it's, kind of, it's a nice little variety of uh, different groups coming. Um, I know that you have um, set some hand washing stations throughout. Um, can you talk about, you know, how that's going to be set up, how people can go to the bathroom and, you know, keep themselves sanitized? Sure. So, uh, yeah, we will have two hand washing stations outside in case anyone needs them. Uh, and when it comes to the bathrooms, our, our concession stand will be closed, but the bathrooms will be open. Uh, and we have a few things that we're doing in the bathrooms. Uh, one, obviously, there's plenty of hand soap and hand sanitizer on hand. Uh, and also, uh, I've installed... Um, those uh, those sanitary seat toilet seat covers. Uh, I have a dispenser for those uh, as a precaution. And then what I'm doing is every other stall will be closed. Uh, that'll help keep with social distancing even within the bathrooms. Uh, and what we'll be doing is the, the stalls that are closed will be in the process of sanitizing those. Once that's done, we'll open those up and then we'll close the previously open ones, sanitize those and kind of go through a rotation like that. Uh, and then any lines that there are to get into the washroom, there's uh, markers on the floor, again, to keep the six-foot social distancing in place. You mentioned this earlier, but can you talk about how you train your employees to best assure that people can have a safe experience? Yeah, I, I used a lot of the resources that uh, the, the state of Illinois and the federal government have, have posted. Uh, a lot of that has been helpful. Uh, I've also looked at a lot of the rules for similar businesses, you know, like uh, restaurants, how they did the curbside pickup. Um, but a, a lot of it is just kind of what we're going through on our own on a daily basis where, you know, everyone's got their mask candy. We're washing our hands. We're sanitizing. Um, it's, it's really what we're doing individually we're kind of just blowing that up and incorporating that into the, um, the uh, operations of the theater. With, with social media, and I'm sure you see this because you get all kinds of responses on your Facebook page and other places, um, there's, there can be a tendency for gotcha pictures and things like that from right. events like, oh, look at here's the beach, here's all these people, here's a park, something like that. Um, can, can you, and, and we deal with it too on our Facebook page, oh, sure, yeah. so does everybody. How do you deal with that? And like when Friday comes, uh, it, inevitably somebody's gonna be close to somebody else and it may get caught in a moment. How will you respond to that? And, and how do you approach that in general? Cause you're getting a lot of comments right now on your Facebook right, page. Right. And you no, can respond to some, but not all maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's always a lot of comments. I, I try to address at least every comment or or at least give it a, a like or something to let them know that I read it. But it's been pretty tough the past few posts. You know, there's like a thousand comments. I, I can't get through that. But uh, I, I know the more as there are a lot of comments, there's also going to be a lot of eyes on us. And I, that's on me to um, to dictate to my employees when we're all together tomorrow to say, look, 
no matter what you do, no matter where you are, just know that you're probably being watched. So we got to be on our, we, we have to be on our A game throughout this whole uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, uh, but that being said, I know that, <laughs> I mean, it's inevitable that there's going to be something found or maybe even something taken out of context. Uh, and I guess I'll just have to deal with that as they come. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm confident in, in my staff and, and in, our, in our plan through the, these times right now. All right. Now, how about the movies? I mean, there's that. We've talked about this before. There's no new movies coming no new out movies. this summer. So, you know, uh, some of my favorites are coming later. Billy Madison and, and Tommy Boy. What, what's your summer look like with that? And, and I, how do you figure that out? And what's the process you have to go through in order to get, you know, the licenses to play those? Yeah, well, so the next opportunity that we'll have to play new movies, it looks like it'd be the end of July. And that's uh, Christopher Nolan's new movie, Tenet. And then I, I believe Mulan is also placed like a week after that. But yeah, up until then, and, and I'm doubtful if that's even going to happen. Um, but we, in the fall, we typically play older classics and we theme the weekend. And they, the movies have always done well. Um, now we have no choice. So yeah, we're playing uh, uh, the Flintstones and Jurassic Park, you know, you know flashback to 1994. Um, but... I, everyone seems really excited. And I mean, we were just talking, I, I, we're going to sell out, which is kind of when you really think about it, a movie that everybody owns at home, they're coming out of their way to, to go see, which it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the, the process to book those movies, it's really the same as booking new movies. Um, it's just a different context. So, uh, you know, instead of contacting you know, the quote unquote, uh, new release department, I talked to their repertory title uh, department. And, you know, some movies are available, some aren't, um, but I, I've got a long list of uh, possible themed weekends, and I, I posed the question on Facebook to the customers. I said, you know, give me two movies that you think would make a great double feature, and give me the name of the weekend, you know, try to keep it a theme. And I'm, t I'm telling you, they came up with some stuff I didn't even think of. So uh, thanks to them. We're, we're going to have some interesting combos, yeah. What tell me the process tomorrow night? Then uh, you talked to me about it a little bit before. When you get up to 300 cars, what happens then? 300 cars, we close the gates because the the number of cars in the line down the driveway will bring us to 350. Um, and because this is pretty strict, we're going to be counting the cars. Um, so so we'll shut the gates at the front. And um, we'll talk to the uh, sheriff's deputies and let them know. And, and that, that's basically it. So it's going to be like a first come, first serve basis? Yes, first come, first serve. And we'll, you'll have staff in the actual lot in front of the, the kind of telling people where they can park and where they can't, right? Yes. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have staff in lot. Um, they'll also receive their instructions at the uh, box office. Uh, I'll, I'll probably have some uh, staff out by outside the box office, um, especially for the for the first couple of weekends. Uh, I think there's going to be maybe a little over education going on with the customers because this is this is different for them too, and I I, I have to appreciate that. So I, I try to look at things from their point of view, and we're we're going to try to uh, to approach things from from that standpoint. From a business standpoint. Uh, you're you're talking about allowing less people in, adding expense, making it, uh, it it's going to be harder to get food in certain things maybe than previously. How's this impact you, and and is the, this still a thing that you know is positive for you, and 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 how does that work uh, heading into the summer when you start opening more days of the week? Right, uh, it's. It already has affected us. Like this year was going to be the year I was going to get a new movie screen and I was going to get, you know, there, I had all these improvements and I even made a post about it. Like, here's what to look for when we open only to have to cancel all that. Um, because I, I didn't, we may not open. That's, that's what I was thinking at the time. I may need this money to pay my mortgage, pay taxes. And uh, so I, as long, if we break even, I'm cool with that. You know, we'll, we'll live to fight next year. Hopefully uh, this is all behind us by then. Um, but there's the, the community, especially a lot of the small businesses, 
have been so helpful, whether it's uh, buying ads on screen or, you know, they've, they've been supporting us in so many different ways. Um, there's a lot more than just the movie and uh, concession that goes into it. There's, there's just a lot of community support and that, that goes further than any ticket sold. Speaking of canceling, um, did you have to tell people like, you know, we're canceling the graduations and then like go back and tell them, no, never mind. Like, how did that work? Well, so uh, when I was told I could not open for the beginning of May, uh, I was the first thing I thought of was, oh man, all these graduations, uh, what am I going to do? So uh, I decided, I'm like, you know what, let's wait. Because I specifically went back to the DCEO and I said, okay, we can't open to the public. Is there any way that I can do the graduations, you know, in a stay in car type of event? And, and the only activity that would be happening is uh, something being shown on the screen. Uh, and I was almost at the deadline where I was going to have to call the, grad, the, gradu the contacts for the graduation. And that's when I, I heard from Tom Weber, who said I can open. And uh, I, when he told me that, it, it kind of, I mean, it was a blessing to be open to the public. But also, I didn't have to make those bad phone calls about the graduations. Awesome. You got anything else, Nabiha? Um, no, that's it for me. Scott, you got anything else that you want to tell the public before you guys are set to open tomorrow night? No, I, I'm just excited. It's going to be cool to see more people than uh, my own family. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited to see. I, I was telling someone, I go, you know, I'm excited to see some familiar faces. But the truth is I probably won't recognize them. Everyone's going to be wearing masks. So I don't know. It'll be good to have eye contact with uh, uh, strangers, I guess, for once in, in a long time. All right. Thank you so much for your time. We really. No.